Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the clinical pharmacology and drug therapeutic. Uh, today we are going to speak about uh, antiplatelets or antiplatelet drugs. Uh, we are going to cover uh, four main groups of medication. Uh, I'm Dr. Hassan, Associate Professor of Clinical Pharmacology, Drug Therapeutic and the Clinical Research. Okay, so according to the anti platelet medication, we have, as we discussed, we have four main groups. We start with the uh, COX inhibitor, ADB receptor inhibitor, uh, glycoprotein 2P3A inhibitor, then we have phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Each group of these medication contain maybe specific uh, type of medication that affect a specific target on the platelets. For this reason, we call this uh, medication or this list of medication anti-platelets. Okay, start with the first one, cyclooxygenase inhibitor. Uh, you can see here we, for the cyclooxygenase, the only medication we have in this group, aspirin. Okay, for ADB receptor inhibitor, ADB stands for adenosine diphosphate. And uh, we have list of medication. Another name for ADB receptor inhibitors, we have P2Y12 receptor antagonist. We have teclobidine, teclid, we have clobidogrel, blavex, then we have brasogrel, uh, tig uh, tigagrelol, and gangrelol. So we have list of medication. This medication mainly affect the ADB receptor, inhibit the ADB receptor, adenosine diphosphate. Moving to the uh, group three, we have glycoprotein 2B3A, glycoprotein 2,3BA inhibitor. We have epsiximab, terofiban, eptifibatide. Uh, regarding the phosphodiesterase inhibitor, two medication available, debridamol, and uh, silastazole. Okay, before we start talking about uh, the medication, how the medication works, the mechanism of action, uh, clinical uses, side effect, adverse reactions, or contraindication, we need to be familiar uh, about the uh, healthy blood vessels. So when you talk about healthy blood vessels here, you can see we have healthy blood vessels. So what we what we have in, in healthy uh, blood vessels, we have collagen fiber around the healthy blood vessels, about the blood vessels. We have healthy endothelial cells. Then we have resting platelet. You can see the resting platelet uh, moving freely in, inside the blood vessels. So the, the platelet and the healthy uh, individuals, healthy blood vessels, their platelet moving uh, maybe uh, smoothly inside the blood vessels. This is number one. Another important uh, maybe uh, topic here to, rem uh, to remember in the healthy blood vessels, healthy endothelial cells, this is the endothelial cells. This is endothelial cells. And abbreviation for this one will be ECS, endothelial cells. They found in the practice on the clinical research, they found we have two types of, so I will, uh, when you talk about endothelial cells, they found we have two type of uh, mediator will be produced from endothelial cells, nitric oxide and prostacyclin. And on another side, we have endothelin. So we have two main factors. You can see here, we have nitric oxide, we have nitric oxide, prostacyclin, then we have uh, endothelin. This, and, and healthy blood vessels, we have balance between these factors. So if you look on this balance here, we have like a scale, and we have balance between these uh, these factors. We don't have anything or maybe overcome the other factors. So this one and the, this is a healthy blood vessels. But sometimes we have we have something called endothelial endothelial dysfunction. So this happened during, for example, obesity. Uh, this happened due to the smoking. This happened during uh, due to the hypertension diabetes so we have several risk factors may uh, aggravate the situation this is not our topic for the uh, today uh, for our today lectures uh, but we need to remember healthy blood vessels produce uh, 
mediators. This mediator responsible for uh, keeping the blood vessels healthy and in uh, in in good uh, situation. Okay, moving to the the, the maybe clo closure look to the. Uh, the resting platelet. This is a healthy platelet during the in healthy individuals. You can see here if you look on the platelets. If you look on the surface of this platelet, we have receptor. So the surface of the platelet contain receptors. This receptor called the glycoprotein 2B3A. This is number one. Inside the cells, we have ATP convert to the cyclic AMB, and cyclic AMB responsible for increase calcium level inside the platelet. Uh, inside the platelet, we have granules. You can see the granules here, and this granules responsible for producing mediators. And this mediator include serotonin, include thromboxane A2 platelet activator factor and adenosine diphosphate okay more uh, maybe uh, maybe next step now uh, you can see if, if you go back to the first slide for example i will go back to the first slide this is healthy blood vessel you can see the endothelial cells is uh, benign the platelet moving sl uh, smoothly here the patient suffer from blood vessels damage so you can see the damage here blood vessels damage so what happened here the platelet the what happened the the endothelial dam damage to the endo uh, happened to the sub endothelium at the same time the platelet start uh, to uh, demonstrate adhesion start to uh, accumulate and you can see the accumulation of platelet here so we have accumulation of platelet in the place so we call this one platelet adhesion next when the platelets start uh, to add, uh, maybe start accumulate and uh, demonstrate adhesions, the next step will be activation. So the first step will be adhesion to the uh, to the injury site, then activated. What you mean with activation? Mean and release of these factors. The platelets start releasing factors or mediator like serotonin, thromboxane A2 platelet activator factor and adenosine diphosphate so adhesion first step second step activation what is the third step okay the third step will be aggregation aggregation you can see here we have more platelet uh, aggregate to each other so platelet are recruited in the damaged area so we have more platelet now and more secretion of these mediators Okay, so we have three, I will go back to maybe, we have platelet adhesion, then we have platelet activation, then we have platelet aggregation, and we have the mediator. Okay, this slide here to show us what happened with the uh, platelets. You can see here, we when you, uh, we already covered the, the receptor on the cell and the platelet service. This is a receptor here. Uh, glycoprotein 2P3A receptor. This receptor is responsible for binding uh, platelet with each other uh, through the fibrinogen. So this one will be bind, for example, to another another uh, platelet here with another platelet, and this one with another platelet. So we have uh, several maybe receptors, and uh, this receptor is responsible for binding platelet. So the connection, the connection between the platelet will be through the fibrinogen. This is a glycoprotein uh, uh, 2B3A receptor. So what happened here when the ATP convert to the cyclic AMB, this will activate or increase level of calcium inside the platelet. Increased calcium level will lead to the release of platelet granules con content, which include thromboxane A2, platelet activator factors, adenosine diphosphate, and activate the receptor. So all these uh, maybe b b contribute to the uh, platelet uh, uh, glut or platelet plug. Okay, uh, the next step, the number, number four, so we have adhesion, activation, aggregation, then we have the next one will be a formation of plug or formation of uh, a fibrin glut. So we have a platelet a glut 
and then we have fibrin glut. So we have two, two, two faces. For the platelet and fibrin glut, you can see the fibrin here. Okay, this is the fibrin. Okay, the, the blue line. This is a, represent the fibrin, fibrin here, the blue line. And with the platelet, with the blood clot, so we have we call this one platelet fibrin glut. So we have a component here talking about a platelet. This is a stable, stable glut, and will be hard glut. Okay. So what happened here? This is the fibrin formation of platelet fi fibrin fibrin glut or fibrin glut. Okay, what happened here when we when we have this uh, fibrin uh, platelet fibrin glut? The result will be activation. This will lead to the activation of coagulation factors in the blood. So first we have platelet activation, then we have activation of coagulation factors in the blood. Activation of uh, uh, coagulation factors in the blood will lead to the conversion of prothrombin to thrombin. And this will lead to the act, uh, convert fibrinogen to fibrin or fibrin. And you can see the fibrin fibers here. And this is responsible for stability of the final glut. Okay. Uh, moving to the uh, the target side for our medications, we are going to speak to cover four medications. First medication, second, first target, second target, what is the third target? Then we have four target number four. So first, second, third, and fourth. Four target will be for the anti platelet medication will affect the platelets. So num number one, target number one, we have cyclooxygenase, COX-1. Number two will be uh, glycoprotein 2B3A. Number three will be ADB receptor. Well, finally, we have uh, phosphodiesterase inhibitor. So we have four target for the platelet uh, to be inhibited by the medication. For when you speak about anti-platelet medications, we need to remember we have four group of medication. Four group of medication consider like anti-platelet drugs. Okay, number one, we have aspirin. How aspirin work? We can see here from the diagram, aspirin or from this figure or chart, aspirin block cyclooxygenase one. Okay, prevent formation of thromboxane A2. Aspirin by the dose of 81 milligram to the 325 milligram will be prescribed to the patient suffer from MI. Now we understand the case in the beginning. Why the patient take the aspirin to prevent recurrent MI. Okay, so the aspirin block the cyclooxygenase and to be more precise, here we have to speak about what type of cyclooxygenase, what type of prostaglandin. Do we have a specific prostaglandin here? Yes, we can speak about prostacycline, prostacycline BGI2. So now we, we are maybe uh, we have a clear image now how the aspirin work as anti platelet by inhibit enzyme called COX-1. This COX-1 responsible for pro uh, prostaglandin type bro uh, name prostacycline and this will will be inhibit thromboxane A2. So if you inhibit thromboxane A2, if you inhibit this thromboxane, we have two results here. Number one will be inhibit platelet aggregation number one number two will be if you inhibit thromboxane a2 will be vaso you will be inhibit vasoconstruction so we have two effect inhibit platelet aggregation by inhibiting thromboxane a2 the result inhibit platelet aggregation and inhibit vasoconstruction this is regarding the aspirin. Okay, moving to the next group. So we already covered aspirin. The next group will be a glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitor. We have epsiximab, tirofiban, uh, eptifibitide. So three medications belong to the glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitor. Inhibit this uh, uh, receptor here or protein. Prevent platelet to bind to each other. 
three medication, Epsiximab, Tirofibam, uh, and Eptifibatide. This medication prescribed as an injection or like infusion. So the second medication, Epsiximab, Tirofibam, Eptifibatide belongs to the uh, GLEB 2B3A inhibitor. The third group of medication, adenosine diphosphate receptor inhibitor or B2 Y12 receptor antagonist. So we can see the receptor here and we have ADB binding to the receptor. This is a normal physiology things, but our medications, we have three or four medication in the list here. We have tyclopidine, we have clobidogrel, prasugrel, tigagrolol, inhibit this receptor. So the result will be inhibit platelet aggregation, activation, and adhesion. Okay, so what we have, I will repeat this one here. We have four group of medication belong to the ADB receptor inhibitor, teclobidine, clobidogrel, brasugrel, ticagrelol. Moving to the next, uh, okay, we covered three medication. As you can see here, we have aspirin, clobidogrel, ADB receptor. Then we have uh, another group of medication, phosphodiesterase inhibitor. We have two medication in this group. We have dobridamol and silastazole. Uh, this medication, uh, what uh, the mechanism of action of this medication demonstrated by inhibit enzyme called phosphodiesterase and the abbreviation for phosphodiesterase BDE, phosphodiesterase in, uh, inhibitor, and this will lead to the prevent conversion of cyclic AMP to the cyclic AMP. So prevent conversion. They don't allow this one to convert. The result will be increased level of cyclic AMP. Increasing uh, level of cyclic MB, this will lead to the decreasing calcium uh, in the platelet. So, f according to our knowledge here, we need to remember the situation. Most ions like calcium or sodium, normally when these ions uh, increase inside the cells, the result will be activation or stimulation or we can call this one like deborization, stimulate the cells, stimulate the organs. So when you uh, when you have increased level of calcium and sodium. So what happened here with the effect of phosphodiesterase inhibitor? Well, what happened to the uh, calcium level here? The calcium level decreased. The result will be decreased activation. So when you have decreased level here, okay? Okay, decreased level of calcium, this will lead to the uh, inhibit platelet aggregation okay this is one effect for the phosphodiesterase inhibitor debridamol and silostazole they th they said later on another study they, they found that the these two medication debridamol silostazole not only affect the platelet so here we have we are talking about platelet okay let me correct it. Okay, the, this med two medication, the bridamol silastazole, also affect blood vessels. For the blood vessels, by affecting the phosphodiesterase, by inhibiting phosphodiesterase, the result will be um, inhibit phosphodiesterase in addition to the increased level of adenosine. The end result will be vasodilation. So inhibiting phosphodiesterase and activate adenosine, this will lead to the vasodilation. And we are going to speak about this clinical application later on in the slide. Okay. So we're done with the a group of medication, talk about the uh, four group of medication in the slide. This is an important slide in the lecture today. Uh, speak about how the aspirin work as antiplatelet. So the answer, the aspirin block the as COX-1, COX-1, or we, we are going to, and this will lead to the decreased formation of thromboxane A2. This is the question number one. How epsiximab prevent or inhibit platelet aggregation? Epsiximab, consider like glycoprotein 2B3A inhibitor. 
Teclobidine, what is the mechanism of action of teclobidine? Teclobidine consider like adenosine diphosphate inhibitor. What is the mechanism of action of debridamol or silastazole? Silastazole, debridamol, uh, consider like phosphodiesterase inhibitor, work on the platelet and the blood vessel, and the result will be prevent platelet aggregation and uh, cause vasodilation. Okay. Talking about aspirin, aspirin cover in another lecture about uh, NSAID, it's already published. Uh, aspirin considered like irreversibly inhibit, irreversibly inhibit thromboxane A2, and this will lead to the uh, irreversibly inactivate uh, COX-1. This will lead to the increased level of brosacycline, okay, and decreased platelet aggregation. I think here we need to maybe speak a little bit about situation here. We have COX. Okay, we have two types of COX. Okay, aspirin. Aspirin black COX-1. Uh, this is aspirin here. Aspirin black COX-1. This will lead to the increased activity of COX-2. It's like when you have uh, two branches river and the, you close one of these branch and the result will be enhance the flow of the another, another branch. So the situation here will be enhance uh, activity of thromboxane A2. Thrombos thromboxane A2, uh, thromboxane A2 responsible for the uh, formation of prostacyclin and you know that prostacyclin two function for prostacyclin uh, prevent or decrease a platelet aggregation decrease platelet aggregation and cause vasodilation so that we talk about aspirin with a low dose Therapeutic use, use of aspirin, they found aspirin reduce, reduce the risk or use for prophylactic treatment for a uh, transient ischemic uh, accident uh, for the stroke. For example, if you use for patients from stroke to prevent from recurrent stroke, uh, recurrent of myocardial infarction and decrease mortality in myocardial infarction. So this one, mainly we use aspirin for patients with a history of stroke history of MI or history of peripheral artery disease. So when you have stroke, MI, peripheral artery disease, we use aspirin to prevent recurrent the event. The only things here, we have risk of bleeding, but they found in from some some study, they found it's like 0.3% uh, there is risk of bleeding from uh, like hemorrhage in the GI bleeding or hemorrhage stroke. Here, if you need more, uh, maybe uh, details or study about the uh, comparative effect of aspirin dosing and cardiovascular risk factors, we can read the information there. For example, we can use uh, 81 milligram uh, to 325 milligram, depends on the severity of the ca or, or case severity. Uh, TIA stands for transient, uh, transient cerebral uh, ischemia and BA, BAI or BAD, peripheral artery disease. Okay, moving to the uh, adenosine diphosphate receptor inhibitor, ADB receptor inhibitor, another name, P2Y12 receptor. We have four group of medication, five group of medication, diclobidine, uh, clobidogrel, prasugrel, tigagrolol, ganagrolol, how this medication work binding to the ADB receptor and inhibit okay inhibit binding ADB receptor to the to the site of P12 white uh, B2Y12 on the platelets and uh, uh, ther thereby thereby inhibit the activation of the receptor all these agents prescribe orally so uh, clobidogrel lavex for example prescribe orally 
the only one in this list the prescribed injection will be ganglor ganglor and we are going to have image for this product uh, tigagrolol ganglor bind to the adb receptor reversibly the only agent this agent uh, bind irreversibly so tigagrolol and the ganglor bind to the receptor in reversible way in reversible manner and the other agent irreversible so when you talk about the clobidogrel clobidogrel rasogrel okay the clobidine this medication bind irreversibly to the receptor adp receptor So you can see the product here. Let me take this one. Okay. Okay. I'll try to bring the image or the picture for the products uh, for the Ganicly roll. Okay, you can see it here like the, the only one available injection belong to the ADB uh, medication or group of medication. Uh, Canagril brand name. Okay, the, the only one. This one here for the injection. The only one available for injection. And uh, these two medication uh, inhibit ADB reversibly. and the other three like irreversible okay this number the only one given injection ganglolol okay that we can ask about what is the mechanism of action of clobidogrel what is adb stand for adenosine diphosphate glycoprotein uh, therapeutic uses, we use this medication for prevention of atherosclerotic event in patients with a recent MI or stroke uh, and patients with a peripheral artery disease, similar what we have for the aspirin. Uh, this medication used for patients with acute coronary syndrome uh, who are to be managed with a percutaneous coronary intervention, acute coronary syndrome. Uh, we use it for TIA stroke. Uh, the, another study approved that using uh, ganglolor uh, as adjunct during BCI, percutaneous coronary intervention, to reduce thrombotic event in selected patient. So we have three main cases, stroke, MI, and BAD, ACS, for the ADB receptor inhibitor. Pharmacokinetic. It's very important because related to the some something something called pharmacogenetic. Clobidogrel broad drug and should be metabolized to the active metabolite, and we already covered that in pharmacogenetic. And clobidogrel will be activated by enzyme called cytochrome 2C19. This will lead to the uh, reduced clinical response. So what happened here? This medication metabolized by the 2C19. This is the, the first step to be active this one inactive this inactive medication and need to be metabolized by 2c19 enzyme to be active they found we have some individual with the genetic deficiency genetic polymorphism of 2c19 this will lead to the reduce or decrease a clinical response the, we we talk about about some people here they consider like poor metabolizer of clobidogrel. This is number one. So we have genetic pharmacogenetic. The other case for the 
that may be different response on the clobidogrel when you have drug-drug interaction. For example, we have omeprazole, is omeprazole. These two medications inhibit 2C19. So now we have could be genetic, could be genetic effect or, or factors, could be drug interaction factors that uh, change the, the drug response change patient response to the medication. Uh, this medi all these medication increase risk of bleeding. Uh, clobidogrel uh, have a, a fewer adverse effects. Uh, uh, and, and incidence uh, of neutropenia is lower. Uh, what that mean with neutropenia, they found one of these medication on the list, especially taclobidine. Taclobidine associated with the high inc incidence of neutropenia. Neutropenia mean decrease or lower uh, low white blood cells count and this may be considered like uh, life-threatening um, or may lead to the life-threatening infections. For this reason, teclobidine no longer available in clinical use because the risk of uh, neutropenia. Next group of medication, we already covered the first group, uh, aspirin. The second group, adenosine diphosphate. The th uh, group number three, we have glycoprotein 2B 3A inhibitor. So what we have so far here, as you can see, we have three medications. We have epsiximab, terofiban, epsiximab, terofiban, and eptifibatide. This medication is considered like uh, inhibitor for the receptor, a glycoprotein 2B3A receptor, block binding to the block binding platelet to the fibrinogen, and von Müller Brown, and this will lead to the inhibit aggregation platelet aggregation. How we can use this medication or clinical use of this medication? Okay, clinical use of medic uh, this medication used for prevent stenosis after angioplasty and use an uh, acute coronary syndrome. Uh, uh, prevent restenosis after angioplasty and use an uh, acute coronary syndrome. Uh, this agent given uh, intravenously injection, three medications, uh, along with heparin and aspirin. So you can see here the patient on aspirin, the patient on the epsiximab and on heparin. So for acute coronary syndrome the patient on three medication we have aspirin we have heparin and then we have abziximab several maybe medication work on different mechanisms of action to prevent glotting okay Okay, so we're done with the uh, group of medication, uh, three group of medication. The next group will be uh, phosphodiesterase inhibitor. Uh, we have a medication name called the Bridamol uh, tablet available there, 75 milligrams, the Bridamol. The Bridamol consider like coronary vasodilator, that's great. Uh, inhibit phosphodiesterase 5. This will lead to the decreased thromboxane A2. Two mechanisms of action. Work on the platelet and work on the blood vessels. Blood vessels cause vasodilation and on the platelet decrease aggregation. So we have two mechanisms of action. And what they found there, the Bridamol caused coronary vasodilator. That's great. Okay. The Bridamol uh, you, uh, is used for stroke pre prevention and is usually given with the combination with the aspirin. FDA approved the use of uh, uh, the Bridamol as adjunctive agent in thromboembolism prophylaxis and those undergo, undergo, undergoing cardiac valve replacement. So we use it as adjunctive agent with other medication. Uh, what we have here in the market, we have it as a tablet, aspirin with the, the Bridamol capsule. Aspirin 25 milligram, 200 milligram, the Bridamol.
So this is a capsule-like combination. And the main reason for to use this one, for example, when you have patients who suffer from stroke, and you can, we have two cases here. Uh, patient suffer from stroke, you prescribe Debridamol, or patient with, uh, treated with aspirin and suffer from stroke, we add Debridamol. So we have two cases here, and we can click on this link here and read more information, for example. Okay, Debridamol for the indication. Debridamol is an antiplatelet agent, also a vasodilator by the FDA, approved for the use as adjunctive therapy in thromboembolism prophylaxis and undergoing, undergoing cardiac valve replacement, stroke prevention. Okay, so you can read the information about this medication in more detail when you on your at your own time. Okay, Debridamol is covered. Debridamol mostly used for st uh, prevention, uh, stroke prevention. Celestazole, celestazole oral antiplatelet, bletal uh, celestazole oral antiplatelet agent, also considered like vasodilator, similar to what we have with the. Uh, uh, Debridamol uh, and working by inhibit uh, phosphodiesterase type 3 phosphodiesterase type 3 uh, this will lead to the de degradation prevent degradation of cyclic AMP and well, this will uh, uh, maybe in decrease platelet uh, aggregation and cause vas vasodilation uh, vasodilation as we discussed that reduce symptoms of this for this reason cause vasodilation especially in the peripheral artery and the result will be increased blood flow to the to the extremities and the result will be improved symptoms of intermittent claudication uh, according to the drug information about this medication celestazole they said this medication consider like contraindicated it's not allowed to prescribe to the patients who are from heart failure in order to be sure we are on the same page, me and you together, and you can look look on the click on the this link here about the lethal or uh, celestazole indication. Okay, so indicated for uh, rec uh, reduction symptoms of intermittent uh, claudication. How this medication work? Contraindication. I'm, I'm willing to demonstrate this one for you. Contraindication. This medication considered like contraindication in patient with heart failure of any severity. Okay. They, they found that the celestazole okay decrease survival compare with the placebo. So it's not allowed to prescribe to the patient with heart failure, celestazole. So the question, which of these medications consider like contraindication in patient with heart failure, celestazole. Okay. Thank you for listening. And uh, I hope you uh, maybe uh, Enjoy this uh, lectures. And the next lecture will focus on the anti-coagulant medication. We are going to speak about heparin and low molecular weight heparin and other group of medication. For today, we already covered four main group of medications, but we in the beginning we focus on the uh, the physiology, pathophysiology of the platelet. We focus on the target, for example, for cyclooxygenase, phosphodiesterase, uh, ADB receptor, a glycoprotein and how our medication binding to these target and the platelets and prevent platelet aggregation, prevent platelet ad adhesion and activation. Thank you so much and have a great day.